Hey man, hey man here. Y'all know how I get down. We talking boxing, man. So I'm sitting here checking out this article on multichannel.com, and I will leave a link in the description box, where it's describing a brand new deal in which uh, PBC, Premier Boxing Champions, has signed a multi-fight deal, basically, to go on and stay in the pay-per-view business. It seems as if that coming this coming year in 2020, PBC is planning on putting on a lot more pay-per-views. Let's get into this article. It seems as if that um, uh, in demand, uh, a distribution, pay-per-view distribution company owned by Comcast and Charter Communications and Cox Communications has reached a multi-event distribution deal with PBC and Elite Wrestling. I mean, in all elite wrestling, and that will provide at least eight pay-per-view events for its cable affiliates with representing more than 60 million subscribers. So it seems as if that PBC is now read up, if you will, with their uh, pay-per-view distributor in demand. And now in demand has already put on about six pay-per-views for PBC this year, including the recent one with Luis Ortiz. And Deontay Wilder. And they also plan on putting on Deontay Wilder versus Tyson Fury. Now, it seems as if that people were wondering, like, what's going on with the rising of all the streaming services? And we've been talking about this a lot lately on the channel with the rising of all the subscription services. And we see the pay-per-view numbers are down, especially in the UK market and in the American market. Numbers are all the way down. And this has boxing fans wondering, like, yo, what is going on with the fate uh, for the future of pay-per-view and people are wondering is pay-per-view dying well in demand doesn't believe that it's dying even though they've lost uh, major uh, companies like the wwe who pulled its monthly sir uh, monthly shows off of pay-per-view and put them on their own wwe streaming service even though they've lost big name fighters like a canelo alvarez or or a Gennady golovkin or you know uh, pay-per-view attractions if you will they or anthony joshua They've lost all of these guys to subscription services and they're still marching forward. They believe that what's left on the table, they can still turn around, uh, uh, make a profit with. And um, they also lost UFC to ESPN Plus a short time ago as well. So uh, this had a lot of people wondering, like all of these major entities pulling off pay-per-view, the numbers are down. The top fighters are all signing up with uh, streaming services. I mean, what's left? Well, in demand, believe that there's something left and they believe in PBC. The thing is, is that we all know that Deontay Wilder did not take a deal with DAZN, the streaming services in which they offered him 100 million and 120 million. And people were wondering, like, what is going through Deontay Wilder's head for him to do this? Well, clearly, you see here, PBC uh is in the business of pay-per-view. I'm sure someone got to Deontay Wilder. And when we always speak on betting on yourself, say, hey, man, why lock yourself in on that app when you can fight on multi-platforms? And on top of that, we will have you on pay-per-view, which means that basically you're believing in yourself. You're betting on your own self and on your own dime. You know what I mean? Well, this is the plan. Now, according to the CEO of In Demand, he says, and I quote, the pay-per-view model is still a good business. For big events, the greatest profits are still in pay-per-view, end quote. So that goes to show you, I mean, a lot of these streaming services, man, they got to hit almost twice or three times the numbers that a lot of pay-per-views uh, usually have because they're charging much more money for pay-per-views. And clearly, in demand believes that pay-per-view is just like I believe is a monumental thing where it brings together family. It brings together friends. It brings more notoriety to the sport. And uh, it's it's a better financial option for a lot of fighters. Now, you think of what's going on over there on DAZN where a lot of fighters are signing up to big money deals. I mean, the question you'll have to ask is how long is DAZN going to be able to sustain giving out those kind of deals? How long before the money starts to run out? And see, with pay-per-view, these networks, like I spoke on before, uh, they're just looking to break even. If they can break even, gather ex the exposure, uh, gather the notoriety from their event and everything like that, the ripple effects of it, if you will, they're good with that. They're good with that. So this is crazy, man. It goes on to say that the new multi-fight, uh, the new multi-year boxing output. So this is a multi-year deal, fight fans. This is not just a one-year deal. The new multi-year 
boxing output deal calls for PBC and Fox Sports to distribute a pay-per-view boxing event each quarter via in demand. So they're going to be putting out pay-per-views every quarter. Imagine the fights we're talking about, fight fans. We better be talking about some good fights. We better be talking Earl Spence, Manny Pacquiao. We better be talking Deontay Wilder, Tyson Fury, uh, maybe for two fights, or Deontay Wilder, AJ, or Deontay Wilder, Ruiz. There's so many monumental fights that can be made on the PBC side, and preferably pay-per-view. Unifications, everything. And for them to be putting out a pay-per-view each quarter, well, quite frankly, I'm expecting some good, good matchups. You know what I mean? That, in my opinion, is the key, you know? So, um, PB, uh, um, um, in demand goes on and says, and I quote, boxing has a long and successful history with the pay-per-view platform. Fighters have long known that becoming a pay-per-view attraction is the ultimate achievement in terms of notoriety and earning potential. Additionally, fights are accustomed to gathering friends and families for a communal viewing party when a big fight comes around on pay-per-view, end quote. And they believe. In that event right there, fight fans. They believe that, that that event right there is the core thing that keeps boxing fans, those who stay in the sport, keeps them in the sport. Because you got something to look forward to. You know what I'm saying? You got something to look forward to. So this is going to be something, man. I'm, I'm, I mean, it's interesting. So this should answer a lot of people's questions out there whether pay-per-view is going away anytime soon. Well, clearly, PBC signing a multi-fight, multi-year deal in which they have they will be putting on pay-per-views every quarter up to possibly eight. You know what I'm saying? They've already done six this year. That's crazy. Goes on and says that the... The uh, uh, the matchups on pay-per-view are stronger than those on the streaming side. Uh, this is an in-demand executive vice president speaking now, Michael Berman. Not only are we getting a large number of fights over the next few years, but we know we're going to get some great matchups as well, end quote. And that is the key. In, in demand, I'm glad y'all realize that, that the great matchups are the key. Now, they will be relying on Fox Sports as well as Showtime to really assist big in this thing here. You know what I'm saying? They're going to need these networks to, to come to the table, put up their best best fighters um, and make this thing happen and, and, and promote this the right way. They're going to need everybody to participate. But if they're going to keep this thing alive, because I'm not going to sit here and act like streaming services, um, they don't got almost like a one leg up they are trying to sign up all of the stars and then if you look at what's really going on they wanted to clip those pay-per-view stars first because if you're going to take the legs from under the pay-per-view model you got to get the pay-per-view stars they took canelo right they took aj right they wanted wilder couldn't get him they want earl spence can't get him they want manny pacquiao can't get him but that's the key. They have to get the stars. PBC still has quite a few remaining under their umbrella. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, also, it seems to me that uh, in demand is looking at the pay-per-view model. Well, they're looking at the streaming services as like they don't want to really compete against them. They want to honestly use them. They feel like they can take the streaming services. And the more platforms that keep rising up, the better it is for them. Because they feel as though they, they can take those platforms, put fighters that you don't normally see all the time on these platforms, like basically basic cable subscriptions were, and put them on these streaming services and build them up to become a pay-per-view star. They're looking to capitalize in that way. They don't they don't they don't want to push the streaming services out of business, if you will. No, 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 no. Mm -mm -mm. They they literally want to capitalize off of the steam that they've made so we'll see how that works out man uh according to um let me see i got another quote that i pulled up uh according to steven espinoza he says and i quote it's under and steven espinoza uh the president of sports and entertainment programming for showtime and he says it's undeniable that the market is going through a lot of changes spurred in the large part by technology. But proclaiming the end of pay-per-view is premature to say the least. The best strategy for content owners is to make the content available on as many platforms as possible whenever and wherever the consumer wants it. End quote. And that is the one thing that we were speaking on before about 
Anthony Joshua was key to success and his popularity was the fact that they put him on multiple platforms. And I would think that any fighter, any boxer will want to be on multiple platforms. So when Deontay Wilder says that, no, I don't want to lock myself in on the app. I'd rather keep on fighting here on Fox and Showtime. And uh, also they'll co put me on pay-per-view in the UK. So I'm on multiple platforms. I'd rather stay in that deal. Because that is the formula to gaining popularity. More exposure, more platforms. The bigger the platform, the better. And Deontay Wilder rolls with one of the biggest. So that's what I'm saying. You know what I mean? And even Steven Espinosa can uh, uh, understand that. You know what I mean? So it is what it is, man. Uh, it also goes on to, to say um, sports analyst Lee Burke. Um, he goes on to say that, and I quote, purchasing a pay-per-view event and subscribing to a streaming service is just another way of phrasing the same concept. Combat sports continues to have a strong appeal, but you need enough fighters that are deemed to be quality fighters to maximize revenues, end quote. So he's saying, you know, basically in a nutshell is that. They're trying to basically blur the lines. Where is it? Look, the same way that you order your streaming service is the same way you can do pay-per-view. They're putting the possibility of ordering your pay-per-views on different platforms now. So you can order a pay-per-view from your phone, from your laptop, from your tablet, from wherever. That wasn't always the case. There was a point where you had to run, rush home, get that remote control, get up on your pay-per-view and order it. But now you can order it from anywhere. And they're trying to blur the lines between pay-per-view and streaming services to tell everybody, look, look, man, it's the same thing. It's the same concept. It's the same how easy it is to stream. Is it as easy to do pay-per-view? And eventually they're going to try to frame this argument as from a financial point of view. Like, well, if you think about it, you're paying the same amount. I can see that line getting blurred as well. You're paying 20 bucks a month for them, but you, we're giving you uh, this many pay-per-views. We're going to charge you this much. They're charging you that much. We're not that far off. They'll try to do something like that. You know, used car salesmen talk you. You know what I'm saying? So just kind of be on the lookout for all that. But uh, my last quote that I want to say, once again, about the streaming services on how in demand a pay-per-view company feel about streaming. And they go on to say, uh, and I quote, um, I don't think it's all a negative that you have all of these distribution outlets. And this is Mr. Bacardi. If you if you're a fan of the sport, you can go and watch fighters that you wouldn't otherwise see, end quote. And that's once again leading into the talk of once again, you know, we'll use them to build up fighters. We like the streaming services around because they give more exposure to a lot of these fighters. So by the time they, you know, have gotten all that exposure and their deal may be be up. Well, guess what? Their pay-per-view fight is going to do monumental numbers. Monumental numbers. Now, it's funny because they also outline in this article that all the pay-per-views that they put on this year, not one, not one has came close to a million. But however, in demand is um, basically foreseeing that they're happy with their pay-per-views basically coming in between 200 and 500,000. If they come in between those numbers, they're good with that. And I know, fight fans, that's the new norm. I keep telling fight fans, that is the new norm. The million pay-per-views with illegal streaming on the rise the way it is, it just may not happen again. It may not happen no time soon. Nothing short of a Golovkin, maybe Canelo, maybe an AJ Wilder. Nothing short of something like that. Maybe even a Ruiz Wilder. Ah, that's kind of close, you know what I'm saying? But the thing is, is outside of something as monumental as those fights, it's nothing... That's going to do it. And, and they're, they're not expecting it. They know illegal streaming is just too much of a beast for them to fight. So that's the new norm. They want to have the, the ripple effects from it, if you will. And they're good with that. So it looks like pay-per-view is here to stay, fight fans. And PBC will be all up in the pay-per-view business. They're talking about putting on one every quarter in 2020 and they signed a multi-year multi-fight pay-per-view deal with the comcast owned company in demand crazy right so that should answer y'all questions is pay-per-view dead is it leaving the answer is no how let me do to the next video main man made man don't forget to subscribe twitter made man 511 facebook main man made man boxing form instagram main man main man you know what i'm saying main man made man yeah, man, this is just crazy, man. I mean, this this pretty much is going to put a bow on this subject for me for a while, so I move on. I've been dealing with this streaming slash uh, pay-per-view issue for the last, you mm, know, three, so, three videos or so. And so uh, it's time to move on. I think this is this concludes it right here. I mean, the question of is pay-per-view dead? Is it going anywhere? Well, here's your answer.
plain as day. To the next video. Peace out.